friendly group. Oh, happy to make Thanksgiving. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lots of chatter going on about Canadian Thanksgiving here. All right. I are, uh, our uh, word of the day is commitment. Thank you, JC, for that idea. So I'm going to be asking you throughout the meeting about commitment, how you um, got through the first eight months, uh, how you secured your listings, how you got to be on the top 20. So be thinking about that. And um, to start us off, I'm super excited to uh, introduce you to Rex Golden. We have a big announcement coming. He is leading a new division of long-term property management. So if you wouldn't mind coming up, Rex, and read our mission statement. Right here. Hey, everybody. Uh, mission statement, to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. We are absolutely <laughs> delighted to have you. Um, one of our commitments to you as agents is continuing to improve as a brokerage and super excited that we will be able to have long-term property management now. Um, so thank you for showing up. We can't wait to hear more about it in a bit. Uh, we had an incredible weekend, so fun. I wanted to share some photos and videos. Lively crew showed up for the beach cleanup. You can see the before picture. And then there's an after picture with all our bags. The goal was within an hour to fill up our bags. And then Jonathan brought pizza for the group and it was a blast. So thank you for all of you who showed up. Um, we've got a couple of videos. Go ahead and roll the first one. RJ? I figured Jonathan. Oh, Sasha. Uh, it was down the way. So it was super fun. Um, I had an idea because we had such a good time. And I want to ask the group here and the group on Zoom. Um, one idea that some companies do is uh, Friendsgiving. And was thinking maybe the week before Thanksgiving, when the kids are still in school, we could find uh, Wednesday or Thursday, have a beach party potluck. And everybody meets at the beach, have some fun. So is there anybody that would be interested in doing that the week before Thanksgiving? I don't want to throw it if you're not going to be coming. So I'm hoping for 10. Can you raise your hand? I got one, two in the house. Where, where, I think where, 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 where. Friendsgiving at a beach. Beach mimosa. Hot luck. <laughs> yeah. When? It would be like the 21st or 22nd, a week before Thanksgiving. So um, anybody on Zoom, can you raise your hand if you're interested? I got two in house. Jonathan. Jonathan, three. This is potluck. Potluck. Can I bring my famous recipe homemade bag of ice? Oh, yes. That would be helpful. Yes. As you long as there's to, beer underneath. You don't have to bring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just you would want you? people there. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll keep asking. We got a few already. So thank you for that. What? Did we say where? I Well, I was thinking. If, does it depend on if you come? Possibly. <laughs> I, I would be thinking south side because um, there's lots of parking by Cam 1, and I can go down there with like five and get the place safe. But I'm open to options if you guys want to do West Maui or Baldwin. Let me know. Yeah, think about it, team. Think about it. Okay, now we have Rex to talk about our new long term mental vision. Thank you, Rex. All righty. Oh, I, I just, um, yeah. I can, on your phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no worries. All righty. So um, I know a bunch of agents with Keller Williams and been in the business for 10 years. So I've met a lot of you. I'm excited to be working with y'all now. Um, my background is property management. Uh, really haven't focused on the sales side in my 10 years of business. Um, but I have been working with Colette and Keone and Todd. Um, we're going to put together a great company here. Um, we're going to build a long-term rentals program. Um, I have a bunch of units that I'm going to start with on the west side, but we're going to grow it to the entire island. Uh, really excited to be working with everybody. 
if you guys have clients who are interested in talking about long-term rental management, please give me a call. My phone number's on the screen. Assuming they can see that, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, my, that's my contact information. Um, I'll have an email later today. I believe that it can be sent out to everybody as well. Um, but if you have clients who are interested in purchasing, if they want to get the conversation started ahead of time before the purchase, I'm happy to jump in and help out. If you have current clients that you're touching base with and you know they're not sure what to do, if you need some kind of direction, I'm happy to help out as well. Um, I'm not in the sales side of the company, so I have no interest in stealing your clients. If you have somebody who does just doesn't know what to do with it, I'm happy to help out and reach out to me. Um, another thing that I do, I've heard it called um, caretaking. I've heard it called second island management, off island management. But long story short, if you have owners who, you know, Kapalua all the way down to South Maui, Wailea area, um, if you have owners that leave their house empty for several months a year and just need somebody to go in and check on it, I'm going to be building a program for that too. We are going to offer a couple different uh, programs with that. Um, it's going to be really helpful to make sure that your client's property is getting taken care of properly. Um, and I would be happy to send out a mailer later on uh, with some of that kind of information. Um, when you do have some clients that you know are interested in the long-term rental management, um, we are going to be offering the first month's commission to you as a um, referral thank you. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that you guys are um, plugged into the to the system as well. Um, and like I said, not look, not looking to steal your clients. Um, just ask that you stay in touch with them throughout the process. Make sure you don't lo lose those connections. We would definitely want to keep all clients in house. Right. Any questions? No. Yep. Does anybody have questions for Rex <laughs> online? Yeah. What's Rex's email? Uh, that is going to be released later today. We can send it on the with this flyer. We'll yeah. do a little correction and send it out. Uh, it, the KW? Yeah. yeah. I, I believe that it's going to be Rex, Rex G. G. Uh, let me put it in the chat. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Rex G at KW.com. Yeah. 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 Perfect. That's going to be it right there. Any other questions? Yes. What about clients who currently have someone renting their unit, but they know that they're going to need to be evicted and they've been managed, they've been self managing mm -hmm. the, the property? Like they want to hand it over to a property manager so that they can do the eviction so it can be sold. Um, I have done evictions throughout the years. I'm happy to help out with that. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, let's take that does. case by case. Yes. Um, yes. We, can, we can talk about that on the side. Um, I can get them set up in the right direction. Um, if I have to walk into a messy situation, yeah, I can do that. It would be selling to the, the spring anyway, so it would be in for this six like, yeah. months and then yeah. they would come down. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. This is separate. I mean, I, I think a, a big goal with this separate is keep problem. clients in house, keep all everybody's right that way. So, yeah, whatever I can do to help out, let me know. So, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so, this solves the problem that people had with, with having rentals that they couldn't service, and we kept feeding them out of the company. Now we're keeping them in house so that you know that your clients are safe and you're gonna get them back when they're ready to sell or buy. You put them back in the rental program. And you get a very generous commission when they uh, when we sign the contract. So this was born out of requests by you, the agents. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, Beautiful. thank you. Does she, have, does she have any inventory right now currently? Um, yes and no. I'm um, still working out some details with some clients that I have. Um, at this moment, I'm going to say no. Uh, give me, give me, give me a couple of days. Yeah. This is brand this is, new. This is brand new. I mean, we literally started the conversation on this like two and a half weeks ago. Um, so I mean this this flyer right here was created like Thursday, Friday last week. So I mean it's it's brand spanking new. Any other okay, questions? Thank you. But I'm up and running. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. My phone's always on. If you can guess that you win a prize. Uh let on your name. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome.
Okay, I'm gonna be asking those of you who are in the top 20 this month, how did you do, how did you do it? What did you commit to to be able to get there? Because um, Gary Keller said, if you're doing well now, congratulations, because this is as bad as it's gonna get. And when that comes from the founder of our company, the largest real estate brokerage in the world, that means something. So pat yourself on the back, think about what you did. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, this is one of my um, favorite new videos Colette shared. I wanted all of you to be able to see it. It's the power of teamwork in the Belgian horse. And I'll be asking at the end what you got from it. So go ahead and roll that. Belgian horses are the strongest and toughest pulling horses in the world. On average, a single Belgian can pull about 4,000 pounds of dead weight, like pulling your average car with the brakes on. Such gritty animals. There's a reason most of the time these horses work together as a team. When you harness two Belgian horses together, they could pull, on average, 16,000 pounds the perfect representation of the power in teamwork. Now, here's the cool part. A lot of times, when you first hook two horses together, they don't pull together and they can't pull 16,000 pounds. Sometimes they don't even pull 4,000 pounds because they're pulling against each other. It's a seesaw effect. And over time and working these horses together, they start developing a trust with one another. And pretty soon, they will not lean into the collars until they know the other one has the weight. And when they both feel that they both have the weight, that's when the magic happens. If you take two Belgian horses that eat together, walk together, work together, and live together for a few months, and then harness them together, they pull, on average, 32,000 pounds. You heard right. That's the power of teamwork. In fact, the world record is held by two Belgian horses that grew up together their whole life. Hell, they pulled 52,000 pounds. It's absolutely crazy to me. The power of relationships and the power of teamwork absolutely has no limits. What did you guys think? What did you get from that? Flashbacks? Uh, oh, you have. Jim Perry said he used to drive horses like that. Nice. Takes a little easy. Those are really nice things. Yeah. Usually you're on the wagon like this, leaning back with all your weight. Just okay. They don't break. <laughs> I mean, the horse Jim Carrey said it's enough. a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. And that would be anybody says leaders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They might break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else online? Teamwork is leverage. Yeah. Teamwork is leverage. And how much more they can do together? It's he. It says independently, they they average four thousand pounds, but just collectively, starting at sixteen thousand pounds for two of them, up to fifty two thousand being the record. It just shows how much that leverage can mean yeah. by working together. Yeah, Teresa said working together, going from four thousand to fifty two, just by the relationship between them. Actually, two years, two men working as a team can do more work than three men working separately. Two people working as a team can do better than two, three well, people working. Well, and if you think of it in your business, right? You have a team. You should have a team of escrow and lending and uh, survey and yourself and your clients, right? That's all your team. Together, you can make fifty two thousand yeah. dollars, right? But if you try to do it yourself, you're probably going to make zero uh, because the deal won't close, right? So that's all about that whole putting the team together to yeah. move forward in one, one motion. He only was talking about the team that we have with escrow and title and um, TC. I, uh, it was interesting when Mark King came, one of the questions he asked me was, do you do stuff with agents outside of the office? And I think that was one of the things, I got chills talking about it. That was one of the things that I love about what we've built here with our company. We won the paddle championship, we play together and, um, and even the beach cleanup, we serve together. And it was just really powerful to get that time outside of the environment. And so that's a little bit what I was thinking too is about the Friendsgiving idea. 
is if we together get to know each other like the horses do, think of what we can do as a company too. So teamwork think, makes the dream. Work. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Okay. Oh, question. Oh, question. Hand raise. Who? Sue. Aaron. 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 It's me. Yeah. So I was just thinking on that line when you um have a transaction, even with a agent from a different brokerage, you're still kind of like a team. And if you don't work together, I mean, we all work with agents that we really didn't get, um, I guess, get along with or work well together, put it that way. And every single step of the way is like pulling teeth. But then if you have an agent, even on the other side that works together, works well with you, then it, it goes so much smoother and, and faster. So same with um within Keller Williams, if we all work together and we, we do pretty well at that. We all, um, you know, pitch in for each other and help each other out. So that makes for a better team. Love that. And you're right. You can be seesaw and fighting against the other agent or you can push together to close it. That's great, Aaron. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. If you are a September top producer, please stand and be recognized or raise your hand in the chat. They're all here. Come on, stand up. Is that April? Yeah, Amanda, you on there? You will be. All right. I'm I'm interested, April. What in terms of commitment to your business? What did you do? You can sit down if you want to. <laughs> what did you do to get there? Um, for me, consistency is key. You know, I I love to start my Mondays here in the office and. You know, many of you know, I do admin with Jonathan and we write down our goals and what we are attempting to accomplish that week. But we also cover a lot of our wins um, and challenges as well. So it's just a really great way to start your week, you know, fresh with business in mind. Um, I just think it sets you up for success and puts me in the right mindset. And uh, it just keeps me consistent with everything. So I think when you're doing the work, uh, and you're, you know, you can help each other recognize your goals or different things that you might want to accomplish and going to caravan or, you know, he'll often have a goal where I'm like, oh, actually I've been meaning to do that too. So, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a really great way to kind of stay on top of the ball and, and keep consistent. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. If you didn't hear uh, in Zoom land, April said her commitment to consistency is key. She makes a commitment to come into the office. There is synergy here that you don't get on Zoom. And often what happens right after the meeting and talking to people is just as valuable as what happens in the meeting because you get ideas, you talk. Um, and then also she has an accountability buddy and I see them, I see them meet regularly. And I remember you said it started as, oh, wow, Jonathan, I'd like to learn from him. And then by doing that, you became right to the top of the company. That's pretty awesome. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else regarding commitment, what you did online? Anybody online that's in the um, top 20? Want to speak up? Choice. Let's hear it. Aloha, everyone. Um, I, you know, for me, it's rhythm of relationships and mm -hmm. follow through, follow up, follow, follow. And it's been a challenging summer of curious escrows. And I, you know, triple times to get through the gate. So it's being relentless and being there ultimately first for your client and putting them first, though sometimes you want to, you know, do other things because <laughs> it's mind boggling um, and remembering why we do what we do. And then we get through and we have success and we are on this conversation. So um, and I and Bonnie and I chat a lot. We're sort of accountable to each other and um and I applaud her because some you know she's not going to always say yeah you're right she's going to put up the mirror and make me think about what could I have done better or to improve that situation so mahalo bani for that hey thank you Joyce who else mm -hmm. no? well I just want to acknowledge that's a huge accomplishment guys mm -hmm. um top 10% of the company and, you know, in a really hard market. That's amazing. We like to show you how we're outperforming RAM, all this training and the coaching program and your commitment to excellence. Uh, take a look at this. Take a look at this. Uh, we have listings taken 
RAM is down 19% and we're up 62 month over month. And then year over year, 123. That's awesome. You guys are taking market share. Good job. And then contracts written, RAM's up 59 and we're up 195. And take a look at those other numbers. That's pretty incredible. Okay, who's completed core A? Woo. Who's completed core B? Yeah. Who's all your electives done? And paid your renewal fee. Not yet. Yeah. How do how do we do that exactly? They're gonna send cards out here pretty soon. Okay. And then you just go and do it. Okay. So they're gonna send October twenty first. October twenty first, they're gonna send out stuff. And um, then the online renewal, the okay. online renewal portal will open. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So October twenty first, you can go pay. Yeah. And a warning, mm -hmm. get it done early because they are super shorthanded there. And if you don't do it early, you're not going to be guaranteed a license come January 1st. So, yeah. Wait. Yes. Go ahead. Jim, then Teresa. Oh, well, Teresa might. Well, okay. Um, do I only have to do the Maui MLS or do I have to do the state separately? State what? Separately. So, state is your state license, right? Uh -huh. Is is your state license? The license renewal. RAM is just your Member membership, membership and your MLS. MLS. So I have two to do. Yeah, two right. to do. Yeah. Yes. And don't forget, there's a required. Uh, Marion has thirty minutes of required from RAM a video. Um, you can find that in Thursday things. I think they even have it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That that uh, video. It's um. It is everywhere on the MLS, and I did it. But I have. Can you check to make sure that they got the paperwork I submitted? Or how do you? I think I would reach out to Ram directly because okay. we don't. We don't. Three hundred eighty-five, eighty-five. Yeah, yeah. Because I submitted it, and then I got a keyboard back in Spanish, and I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my Google Forms just turn to Spanish. I don't know why. I think that's, that's a you. No, Spanish. <laughs> I know where it is over. April's <laughs> wondering how she can confirm. Yeah. Just uh, call yeah. Vincent. Just call Vincent. Okay. Vin okay. Vincent yeah. has the list of all the people who answered, and we switched. The form for those of you who haven't watched yet, we switched the form to automatically notify you that the submission was received, but we only did that last Thursday. Okay. So okay. just call just call Vincent at RAM. Thank you, Marion. And then we have code of ethics too, right? Yes. So there's so, a lot, a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot of things, yeah, a lot of things to kind of keep tabs of. Um, you know, we touch base on it. And I sent emails out to everyone. In regards to their CE status as of when I last checked. So thanks for those who responded and we'll continue to touch those who have not yet responded and not yet completed. Um, so we kind of created this checklist of everything that does need to get done because it there's a lot again on top of the license renewal. Um, you will have to renew your RAM membership, um, complete the code of ethics. And you're able to check the code of ethics completion on your NAR account, or you can call RAM for that as well. You can also get CE right, credit for Credits, that. Yes. For a class, a, a class will get you that credit. Correct. A CE class will get you that credit. Yeah. Yes. That class will not get you that credit. Yeah. The free class will not. The free get class you that will, credit. yeah. The free class through NAR will not get you an elective credit. Thank you. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be dishing out more announcements, kind of like a checklist base to make sure everyone's on top of their game. So they're good to go starting January 1st. Thank you, Allie. Oh, sorry, question for you. Yes. Well, two things. So the RAM renewal, they're going to open that up October 21st, but the license for the state doesn't open until November 1st. Oh, swap. swap. Oh, okay. RAM is November 1st. We have some confusion. Check between we'll, October we'll check between 21st and the 1st. If minutes. you get an announcement that you have to pay something, you probably got to pay it, so just pay it. <laughs> yeah, when it's out, pay the bill. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Okay, I'm excited. Uh, this, what? Oh, sorry. Oh, um, the West Maui agents had this tradition prior you know, years ago where they would meet at luxury listings and uh, once a month and just talk about what's happening on the west side and so we uh re-energized that and it's coming this wednesday 12 o'clock get out your pens and pencils i'm going to give you the gate code please do not share this with anyone else this is exclusively for licensed agents um it 
is at uh, the coffee farms and the gate code is pound 838. Again, pound 838. Did you have a comment, Steve? What was it, 838? 838. And yeah, lunch is provided. Thank you to Christy and Cor. Um, these meetings, Colette had mentioned when she was at the last one, it's really powerful. And even people who aren't on the West Side should go because I, Amanda's been coming to all of them. And you get an inside look at what's happening with the associations because we have agents who are living there and working with um, very specific properties. And so it's your best way to really get a glimpse of what's happening on the West Side. And what I noticed last time I was there, most of the agents that were there were our top 20 agents. And so they saw the value of making the drive to the West Side. And if you're starting, this is a great way to get into the coffee farms. It's a gated community. And if you haven't seen it, you, it's, beautiful. it's beautiful. And um, you then when you have buyers, you can say, oh yeah, I was just at the coffee farms at this listing the other day. Let me tell you about it. So encourage everybody to come. It's gonna be a blast. Okay, um, excited about this Friday. I know Laura, Liza and Celeste are coming. Would love any of you women, it is uh, just for women. It's uh, Ella Propelfer, Elevating Women in Real Estate. We've got an incredible panel. They got it sponsored, so it's only 10 bucks, but you get breakfast and lunch and facility. Uh, the person who organized it said it would have been over 70 per person. And so it's a great way to learn um, from the best in the business. We're gonna have experts there. Um, would love for you to join us. Okay, Teresa, would you like to speak to Career Night? Hey, Teresa. Teresa. <laughs> yeah. like, so. No, exactly. Yeah. We're gonna take yeah. a best, right? So we're gonna go to. We're gonna meet at Three's Bar and Grill. This is a family-friendly restaurant. So if you have recruits who are less than twenty-one, please bring them. They can order non-alcoholic drinks, and I know they like to eat, so it's all good. Um, if you bring an agent, if you bring an agent or a potential real estate recruit, you'll get one drink ticket and they will too. There'll be food. Food is fantastic. If you haven't been there, it's awesome. Uh, if you bring two, you get two tickets. Each of your people get one, but you get two. So you, you can increase your profitability by bringing more people and then you get more drinks to celebrate. So that's pretty much it. It's easy. We talk about the schools we um, that are available, Keone's school, as well as some others. We know who's the best. And then from that, we also um, talk about the coaching program, what they can experience working with us in the market center. And it's fine. See you then. Yeah, people have I have a question. Um, I will be, I'm not here on October 24th, but I have somebody who's interested in going into property management. Um, could I send her? Sure. Yeah. So April's asking if she can send someone for property management. Absolutely. Because yeah. they can still talk about the school. Um, know that your people that you, you send over are protected because when they sign in, they sign in with their name, their email and their phone number, and then who referred them. So in that case, they put you down and then we just mark that they're interested in property management. They still have to go through real estate school, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so if you can't join them, send them anyway. Okay. We'll be easy to find. We'll be out on the back, um, Lanai. Other than that, it's it's really easy and fun. And please join us. Even if you don't have anyone and you have to buy your own drink, we'll feed you. But it's, it's nice to talk story with people. Awesome. So, Speaking of uh, new careers, I'm interested. How many of you guys remember your first eight months in real estate? What do you remember about it? I was terms, poor. Yeah, mm -hmm. poor. Often people start, there's COVID. Um, hard. It was hard. Yeah. A lot of output, not a lot of input. A lot of output, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of input. <laughs> so your commitment, though, how did you, how did you get through that? I just had faith. Yeah, just had faith in coming to these classes and everybody, everybody, that's what everybody are, are always said. And what I said earlier today is hard work pays off. Yeah. I said, just keep going, keep going. Yeah. And I did. 
Yeah, awesome. I didn't want to go back to what I was doing before. That's right. Yeah. It it makes you not want to go back to what you're doing before because you get that freedom of schedule. And once you have it, it's hard to go back. There's no plan B. There's no plan B. Yeah, exactly. Damn, that's awesome. So anybody online want to share first eight months, what you remember? This is Jonathan. Zero transactions. Zero <laughs> transactions, lots of work every day and zero transactions in my first eight months, even though I did the program and it was supposed to be the first three months and then six months and um, a lot of education, you know, like I just kept taking courses and doing open houses. And then as soon as my first I had like five uh five actual transactions, but none of them went through. There was so I it was, a, it was a really challenging first year. And then all of a sudden in the second year, everything turned and all the effort paid off. Awesome, Jonathan, thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Dean? Yeah, I would say first eight months for me sucked really bad. Um, it was a long time ago. It was my first job out of college. Wow. But at the end of eight, eight months, did you say, did I say eight years? No, eight first months, eight yeah. Months. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. My first eight months were pretty challenging. And at the end of eight months, though, I was lucky enough that I was sitting up in the house and someone walked in and bought the $5 million listing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> so it really sucked for the first eight months, and it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good. Anybody else online? How many of you would say that you confidently did 100 hours? Of open houses during your first eight months mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so i have a golden pineapple award for someone who shows up at the meetings and has done over 100 and is going to kill it tim come on up <laughs> <laughs> celebration we're gonna celebrate what's coming <laughs> right okay um Question, what did you guys notice about the average single family price this from last month? It went up significantly. Yeah, yeah. Does one anybody know what? 1.490? This, okay, that's median, yes. But the average was great. Yep, 2.078, up 19%. I'm like, what happened? Does anybody know what happened? Properties, that's that's right. Yeah. It was the median, not the average. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think there was a 15 and a 15 that closed. Yeah, so, yeah. so big ones, right, skew it. And so great, we're the economist of choice when our clients read the article that the average went up to 2 million, you're like, oh, let me tell you. I went and looked, there was, get this, there was an 18 million that closed, but it was at auction. 4610 McKenna Road originally listed for 39 million. And last month, someone got it for 18. Crazy, right? And then there was another one that was 17.9. So that's going to skew our numbers. But now, when people ask you, you can tell them, how about days on market? Does anyone know what the single family days on market update? Uh, I don't know if it's gone up. Let me check. It's uh, 118. 118. Yes, good. Let's see if it went up. Up 12.4%. Yep. And then that residential. That's single family residential. And then what about condos? Yeah. 990. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, that's how many are listed? Is that what you're saying? I was asking about days on market. Just so you guys can tell your clients when they get frustrated, things are stale. 135 days. Up 31.1%. So, what are you thinking? Price reduction. Yes, price improvements, price reductions. Right. Okay, uh, moving on. We have Open Island. Although the price went up. The, the price did go up in condos. 90, yes. 900. Right. 990,000 was a medium. Yep, 990 median and an average 1.1 away. Yeah, yeah. Good job, guys, reading your reports. Um, comes out seventh, so you can always look up the RAM. And um, if you're here, I'm happy to print one out for you. Nice, nice, good job. Okay, uh, we are doing Open Island the first Friday of the month. 
we had a question that there's only been like five or so participating, hoping to get 10 or more next time. Thank you for those who participated. Tony and I were talking about it and asking, is Friday a bad day of the week? Do you think we should do it a different day of the week? Um, or is Friday good? When we originally asked, people said Friday, but I didn't yeah, know. Friday. Friday's good? Friday. Yeah, okay. Yeah. First Friday, it's kind of easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And okay, any other feedback online? No excuses. More yeah. people. Yeah, so sign up now. We're gonna cut off the um, sign up date the Friday before so um, that we can promote all those listings the following week. So if you can get, please get signed up before the Friday so we're not doing the last minute stuff. That I can't would... believe no one's sitting in Hakuna Matata Lane. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Where is it? I think this was last Where? month, right? Yeah. Hakuna Matata, just a unit one. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's on the, the Joe. Oh, oh, John Doe. John Doe. Oh, John Doe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it full. Guys. I, I, I would believe that it would be yeah. here. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe that that's a, that's a here. April said she would believe it's here because <laughs> the name. Okay, we have business planning foundations. Um, It's an opportunity for everyone, not just if you're new and jump start. I don't know if you want to speak to this at all. You're welcome to. Come on up. Fun. Yeah. Um, so business planning foundations, this is not just for, for coaching agents. This is for all of us. We're in this last quarter of the year. And if you're not thriving, if you're barely surviving, this is a class for you. This is time to go back to basics, to organize your business, to make sure that you're on, port, on point to be able to make the money that you need to make coming into 2025. So please come and join us. Uh, we should have sponsors. It's just five days, it's at lunchtime, and that's it. Okay, thank you, Teresa. How many of you have experience with short sales? Okay. Yes. Yes, tell me. <laughs> Here's a chance to learn more. This was actually requested, and so we wanted to give you the opportunity to, to learn more about it. So please join us Monday, November 4th. It's right after the huddle. We did that on purpose so that if you come here, you can just stay if you want or um, same with Zoom. If you want to be in the business, take this class because this stuff might start coming up. Yeah. Especially as we see the days on market rising and the uh, uh, price going there. Yeah, Tony's yeah. saying if you want to be in the business, take this class. As a real estate professional, at least we should understand it. I want to acknowledge people that had closings this month so far, and then ask you if there's a story or a way you secure that listing. We have Carla, Liza, Raymond, Dean, Benjamin, Todd, Marcus, Sarah, Chris Haig, Sharon, Sam, Chris Haig again, and lots more coming. Congratulations, you guys, doing business in a difficult time, and can't wait to hear who's closing next soon. Amanda, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, know why, I don't know why you're not on this list. Congratulations. I know, it's good. I got it, I got it from the report, but congratulations. First closing, that's amazing. Um, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll work on that. Getting a slide for it, that's good. Um, okay, we have been given the opportunity. Uh, the company has committed $10,000 towards our holiday party. And we had requested to get back to Sugar Beach. Um, and so we're planning on that. It starts at 6, December 7th. Save the date. We're doing it on a Saturday to make it more accessible. Um, we do have the opportunity in order to have it. We're raising $12,000 because it's expensive to get venues on Maui. And so I'll be meeting with the board of directors on Thursday and really strategizing how we can do that. We have a platinum opportunity of exclusive sponsor for 12, two gold opportunities, 6,000 each, or silver, um, four, no, three, 4,000. So if you have business that you've given to affiliates and can help get sponsors, that's what's going to secure our venue. Blood also was wondering and suggesting we get a DJ. So I know Angela's husband's a DJ. If you have connections for a DJ and we may need, um, find out how much they are and then make it more fun with live music. Otherwise we're back to Spotify playlists. So um, 
please help. Uh, any questions on that? Oh, there's only uh, 110 spots. So we literally have 50 people, 10 in house here and 40 on Zoom. And you can bring uh, your significant other. And so the first come first serve, I would say, we'll leave it up, register now and register your guests. And um, it did max out last year. And so definitely want all of you to be able to come. I'm gonna give you a minute so you can register. We have food and fun, had a great time last year and we would like to celebrate with all of you. So hard to say no once it gets full, but um, then if you don't end up being able to go, let us know because we only will. Only 109 spots left. Only 109 spots left. He only got <laughs> dibs on the first one. Nice. Oh, you're Any questions? On that, we did have dancing last year and it's good food. Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody gets two drink tickets and then it's on you. Um, okay, Keone's in the house for Code of Ethics and Standard Practice. <laughs> Don't have too much today, gang. Good morning. Um, let's see, what do I have today? I just wrote this down. Um, on the uh, <laughs> hi, yes. okay. on the um, uh, I just heard this 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 story. Okay, so I just this is like on realtor safety. Uh, there was a realtor. It was kind of unrelated to being a realtor, except that we all do these sort of things. And she was a realtor, but she was at a parking lot here on Maui sitting while her husband ran into a store and somebody opened her car door and said, I have a weapon and you need to get out because I'm stealing your car. And so they were like, okay, they luckily grabbed the key fob out of the thing. So it only, you know, it only went so far. They found it later up at like, uh, I think a Maui High area or something like that. Anyway, but she was probably doing what we all do, right? When we're sitting in their car waiting, the AC is going, you're just looking down at your phone, right? Doors weren't locked, they opened the door and there, then it happened, right? So if you're doing that, make sure you're aware of your surroundings, lock your door if you're sitting in your car, because there are people, this was in a, this was in a, a middle of the day, Bukalani Longs. So be a vigilant and cautious. Uh, the... Who can tell me what bailment means? No. I've never heard of it either. Okay. Um, it's it's when you go and show property, um, or if you're the listing agent, right, and you say, Oh, here's the lockbox, you can go show it, right? Or that or your buyer's agent said, Oh, don't worry, I'll be there. You can just let me take take care of it, right? Something gets stolen. That's now on you. Because you told them, don't worry, we'll take, I'll take care of it. I'll take responsibility for it, right? So stop doing that. You make sure if they're on a lockbox, you say, I'm not taking responsibility for it. You should be there, right? Instead of saying, oh, yeah, no worries and all that, okay? Make sure you have that conversation with your sellers if you're listing agents, as we're going to be getting a lot more listings that secure your valuables, right? It's right there in the listing contract. Make sure you talk to them about it, Um the we are we announced the CTK Reynolds. Um, here's a little football trivia. Since we're in football season, there's a little football trivia for you. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. <laughs> Go Ducks. Uh, they beat Ohio State. Or sorry, the Ohio State. Um, did you know Levi Stadium, right, where the San Francisco 49ers play? in Northern California, has a almost quarter of an acre farm on the roof of the stadium that they cultivate for the whatever going on at the stadium, whether it's football or a concert or anything like that. And the chefs downstairs, they actually have chefs. It's not all just carted in, right? And they say that they work with the guys, as they say, the guys on the roof, right? And they say, oh, what do you want to make, chef? We'll grow it, right? I thought that was pretty cool. Really cool. Like, 
sustainable football, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, oh, sorry, I just face. Uh, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting for um because we're in real estate and there's a lot of buildings now that are uh putting things like that, gardens or rooftop, things like that. Um uh, other space. Thank you. The yeah. end. Very cool. Thank you, Tony. Oh, um, I'll be out of town. Be out of town from Thursday, twenty third to seventeenth through twenty third. I'll still be working though, but we're going to Seattle, so a little bit of Thursday. I'll be on the plane. <laughs> going to see hockey, not football, because Seattle's out of town. Yeah. Yeah. The Kraken, yeah. The Kraken. Um. Uh, on that note about lockbox too. Uh, remember, do if you're out of town. Do not give the code to anyone that's not licensed to show. If you have a buddy that, you know, it's easier to ask than another agent, um, that is not ethical behavior. And um, yeah, definitely reach out to another agent that's licensed to show so we stay compliant. I know it's easy. Um, maybe just ask your friend or your spouse or something, but we really need to make sure that licensed agents are the ones opening the doors. So, um, okay. I think that's it. Oh, uh, opportunity now. If you have a listing you would like to highlight, we do over 30% of our business with each other. So if you just got a listing contract signed, we can speak about it here. Um, and uh, feel free to share now. Anybody want to highlight a listing? Dean, want to come on up? Uh, not really. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, not that big of a deal, but I have a... Um, a really cool little Roll Kahana studio that I put on the market for 620000 And uh, Roll Kahana is hotel zone, so it's a pretty good option. And there's a, currently a long-term tenant in it right now, so you have the choice of long-term or short-term there. And it's really great condition, easy to show. Let me know if you have anyone for that. 620000 Roll Kahana studio. Awesome. It's a good view. What's the long-term tenant mean? They're currently paying twenty two hundred a month, but it's an employee of the owners, so it's a little bit um, it's potential to get more than that. I mean, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice unit. Twenty two hundred seems reasonable to me, but uh, and again, it's considered a friends and family deal. Thanks for, thanks for showing up, Dean. Dean drives from the west side to come to the meetings. You guys can drive on Wednesday. Yeah. Thanks for party. Yeah, Miranda. Miranda. Good morning. I have a listing that's about to go live in a, just a little bit at Hale Ono Loa. It's a downstairs first floor um, unit 111 with ocean view. It's still tucked in for privacy. One bedroom, one bath, upgraded turnkey and very busy in the short term rental program. And we're listing it for seven forty nine. Awesome, Miranda. Thank you. All right, Owen. Oh no, she's not on anymore. Oh, you're welcome. Miranda, Miranda won her first fantasy football game. Oh, so, nice. Congrats, Miranda. You know, I've been too busy opening new escrows. So I'll let <laughs> that go. go. I'll let that one go to Todd. And <laughs> he's gonna get his ass kicked today. But thank you, Tim, for letting me win my first week and we can oh, be friends you. again. <laughs> Anybody else? Or buyer needs? I'm interested. What what do you think? Um, I we get in a, a unique view, Penny and I being in the office and JC and the others that are here. Uh, we often get to hear agents on the phone. And I'm interested for those of you who get your buyer's rep signed, if you could share what you say, because what I've heard is really high performing some of our top professionals. They're talking to agents they the client they've never talked to before. And they talk matter of fact at a high level about signing the buyer rep agreement. And it's not a thing, you know, they're just able to get it signed and go. And then I have other agents that are coming in saying, getting it signed. I don't know what I'm saying. They're complaining, they're pushing back. They're, I'm too pushy. And I think what I observe and tell me what you think, because I'm interested in what you say, it's sort of a confidence thing. Like we, we know we need to do this by law, but it's also to our advantage. I wish I would have started when we had to do this. You know how much time you're saving and not wasting right. showing clients things that then go by with someone else or, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's a real opportunity and I'm interested 
for those of you online that, that have been getting them signed, what do you say? I know you have. I raised my hand. Oh, thank you. I just had another one signed and I just say it's um, nationally and state association mandatory that we, we have to, otherwise I can't show you any property. And that I don't get any, I haven't received any flack from it thus far. Yeah. And I have a, several signed. Thank you, Joyce, for sharing. Yeah, I heard Bonnie in here and it was just really awesome to overhear her. Again, this is like, the, I think the first call she had with the client and she, it was just a matter of fact thing. This is what we do. Um, there were some ideas that came up after the last huddle. I think Marion could speak to this and Keone. Um, you could just have some in your car and do it, meet someone somewhere before you go to the showing, but it just can be for the day. It doesn't even have to be long-term as a way to just make it less, you know, less threatening. So anybody else? Yeah, Dean. I think it's also important um, when we kind of see that it's mandatory to sign this, like it's forcing them basically to tell them what it is that we, they're getting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for me, um, my listing presentation is exactly the same as my buyer interview presentation. It's the same thing. I go through all the value that I bring to the table, and how many years I've done this, what my volume is, my experience. And I think it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same conversation as getting a listing in my opinion. Awesome. Right? Yeah. It's just the same thing, right? You're getting the listing to agree to to sign a document that you're going to be representing them. Right? To me, I'm not sure why it's any different than doing the same thing with the buyer, which is trying to gain the business and showing them why you deserve it. Love that. Love that. Dean said, it, did, did you hear online? Thumbs up. I'll repeat. Yeah. Three. yeah. Oh, you did get to hear. Okay, good. Good. Thank you for sharing, Dean. Anybody else? Nancy and then Steve. Nancy, then Steve. Um, I just keep it real uh, factual and not emotional. I take the motion out because I think number one, we come from fear and nervousness. So if you just stick by the We lost her. The actual form and read it and say how that this is a national law. We need them to sign it. And it could be just for an hour. It could be for a day. It doesn't be for a year. You know, it could, it, you don't have to scare them. And I think problem getting people to sign it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Nancy. Steve. I know you're there. Oh. Oh, oh, hands up. We cannot hear. First to Steve. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. There we go. We'll come back to Steve once. Tell us when you're there, Steve, and we can hear you. <laughs> Anybody else? I just let them know that it's a part of, of what they need to expect. It's going to be a buyer's rep as well as a pre-qualification or a proof of funds going in. This is what we need to have done in order to go forward. Yeah. And we can do it for a single property. We can do it for a day. We can do it for 15 years. And that is, I'd say, 15 years. And their eyes get really big. It makes one year look really good. Yeah. Right? Oh, right. <laughs> and, and the same thing goes with commission. You know, this is what I charge. And we're we're just going through it, and I'm not having pushback on signing it. Awesome, awesome, Teresa. Thank you. Anybody else? Steve, are you there? <laughs> no, we'll hear from you next week. <laughs> should have been here. <laughs> oh yeah, I should have been here. Um. Okay. If that's it, nobody else. Have a great week. Go get them. Thanks for coming live. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, no. Mahalo. <laughs>